Hu. Welcome to Dr. Nakamura's lecture series on Advanced Bridge Engineering. Number uh, B3.1. The title of this lecture is Corrosion of Bridge Cables and its Prevention Method. This is the Inoshima Bridge in Japan. We checked the cables six years after it was completed. And we found the cable was corroded. Brown parts indicates steel corrosion. That was the start of my study on the cable corrosion. In this lecture, these five topics are presented. Part 1. I show you some examples of corrosion and breakage of bridge wires. A shows the broken wires of the suspension bridge cable inside the anchorage. B is also the broken wires of a suspension bridge cable. This is a suspension bridge in the mountainous area. At the anchorage here, strands corrode and deteriorate like this. Water stays at the anchorage, causing corrosion and wire breakage like this. Hanger ropes also have corrosion problems. Hangers have relatively large cyclic stresses, which would cause fatigue failure. Even if its appearance looks fine, the outer strand is corroded. The center strand is more severely corroded. This is the hanger rope of the actual bridge. Part 2. Mechanism of corrosion of suspension bridge cables. We inspected the cables of this suspension bridge just six years after it was completed. The cables are carefully protected against corrosion. Firstly, the wires are galvanized. After all the wires are bundled into a circular shape, anti-corrosion paste is applied on the surface. Then another galvanized wires are wound over the paste in the circumferential direction, which is called wrapping wires. Finally, the surface is painted. We never expected this kind of heavily protected cables corroded in such a short period. We removed the wrapping wires. The light brown color shows the anti-corrosion paste and it's healthy. Whereas dark brown and black color is the steel corrosion underneath the paste layer. This is a close-up of the healthy part. This is the corroded part. The upper part of the cable looks healthy. The lower part has some steel corrosion. The side part is most severely corroded. Why do we have such a difference? This was our first question. We did lots of tests with small cable specimens and also measured temperature and humidity inside the cables at sight. When we unwrapped wires, water came out from the inside. So, water exists inside, which makes the cable inside very humid. At the upper part U, the wire was wet at night because the humid air forms dew when the temperature goes down at night, but it dries up during day because temperature goes up. The lower part L is always soaked in the water. The center part C is highly humid day and night. It does not form dew because temperature does not go down in the center. 
the side part is wet day and night because dew is formed and not dry up because temperature does not go up enough. We try to simulate corrosion under uh, these four environments. Test S simulates the side of the cable. Wires were wrapped with wet gauze and put into a sealed box where temperature was kept at 40 degrees centigrade to accelerate corrosion. This simulates the always wet condition. Test L simulates the lower part. Wires were soaked in the water. Test C simulates the center part. Water was supplied to keep the box inside always at 100% relative humidity. Test U simulates the upper part. Wires were wrapped with wet gauze and kept in the box with an open area. When the wet gauze became dry, water was sprayed. This simulates the wet and dry condition. This shows the wire specimen wrapped with wet gauze. The wires were put in the boxes which were kept in this some hygrostat. This is the test results. Y-axis is the mass loss of specimens due to corrosion. X-axis is the elapsed days. According to the graphs, corrosion rate is different depending on the cable positions. Test S has the highest corrosion rate. This is the final appearance, which is similar to the side part of the actual cable. Test L comes next and the corrosion is smaller. Test U and Test C didn't corrode. All these test results clarify the mechanism of corrosion of the suspension bridge cable. When wires are corroded, they would lose the strings. So I study the mechanical properties of corroded wires. First, we made specimen wires on corrosion level 1 to 3 by the same method using the thermohygrostat. Then tension tests were conducted to find tensile strengths, elongation, and fatigue strengths. This is the new galvanized wires. This is corrosion level 1 wires. It is covered with white zinc corrosion. This is corrosion level 2 wires. The steel layer under the zinc layer started to corrode. This is corrosion level 3 wires. Ferrous rust spread widely and deeply. We used galvanized steel wires and not galvanized bare steel wires. This shows mass loss due to corrosion and the days of corrosion acceleration. The data in 90 days correspond to level 1, 250 days level 2, and 350 days level 3. The both types wires corrode with time, also the bare steel wires corrode faster. Then tension tests were conducted. This showed the actual tensile strength with mass loss due to corrosion. The actual strength is obtained by dividing the tensile force by the cross-sectional area without the corroded area. It is understood that the actual tensile strength does not change for the remaining area. This shows the elongation with mass loss due to corrosion. Elongation of level 2 and level 3 are much lower than level 1. So, elongation decreases with corrosion. I wondered why this happens. 
I thought when a wire is corroded, its surface becomes rough because it does not corrode evenly. This may reduce ductility. So we machine cut the surface of corroded wires to remove the roughness and smooth them. Then tension tests were conducted. This shows elongation with mass loss due to corrosion. The solid square marks are the corroded wires and the wide square marks are the smoothed wires. Look at the smoothed wires. It does not lower with corrosion. So, surface roughness is a major reason for reduction of elongation. We also carried out cyclic tests. This is the SN curves, stress range and the number of cycles until breakage. Fatigue strength of corrosion level 2 wires is lower than the new wires under level 1 wires. Level 3 wires is much lower. So you can understand fatigue strength lowers with corrosion. We also carried out fatigue tests under wet condition. A steel wire is wrapped with wet gauze, inserted into a silicone tube, and sealed with vinyl tape. This shows the close-up of the specimen. This shows SN curve of level 2 wires by dry and wet corrosion tests. This is the SN curve for level 3 wires. Clearly, fatigue strength is lower under wet condition. This is a bad news because wires usually corrode under wet condition on actual bridges. Stress concentration develops fatigue crack at the corroded part. At the crack position, anode and cathode reactions occur and hydrogen is produced. A fatigue crack occurs at the corroded part, then hydrogen accelerates the crack propagation. So, failure is a mixed phenomena of corrosion cyclic stress fluctuation, and hydrogen. This is a broken part of the level 3 wire by the dry test, before and after corrosion substances were removed. This is a level 3 wire by the wet test. It is understood a wire was broken at the corroded part. These are the uh, SCM photo of the broken section of the corrosion level 3 wire. A shows the crack initiation point and B is the crack propagation area. The fatigue crack initiated at the corroded part. Here is another interesting finding. We investigated the broken wires of an old suspension bridge. This is the close-up of the broken section. The crack initiation position is indicated by an arrow. This is the same broken section from a different angle. Suspension bridge cables have been broken on many bridges. Most of the researchers think it is caused by the hydrogen embrittlement, but we think fatigue failure would be critical in some cases. So we produced the broken wire by the hydrogen embrittlement at laboratory. This is the broken section. Look at this actual broken section. It is clearly different. We believe this was caused by the fatigue failure. This is the end of part 1 and 2. Part 3, 4, 5 are presented on the next video.